Happy Sunday, everyone. This is Derek the Nitwit. Welcome to Any New People, and welcome back to all my wonderful subscribers. So far, this month has been a continuation of the busy week of Thanksgiving. Sunday, I went to Walmart, Walmart Neighborhood Market, not the big Walmart. I thought I was being smart. What I forgot was Monday was the first, which means a lot of people got their SNAP benefits. I have nothing against SNAP benefits. Um, you know, if you need help, you get help. I mean, it just means that the grocery store was going to be even, you know, even busier than normal. So, but you know, I made it through. I didn't, it wasn't a huge shopping trip for me, just a handful of things I needed to pick up. So in and out 30 minutes or so. So made it to there, get back out, wait for the bus, chilling out. Random guy comes up, nice and calm, whatnot, asked what I was doing, just so sitting here waiting on the bus. Said he was bored and he just wanted to fight someone. And I looked at him and I'm like, I'm a little too nelly to fight. I can't fight. My style of fighting is duck and run. Um, seriously, I will trip over my own feet, fall down and knock myself out before you even get a chance to swing. You know, I just, I don't, you know, I don't fight. And the guy was cool. He's like, okay, cool. Walks off, looking for someone else to fight. I mean, at least he was chill, but it was weird. Then guy comes up, a different guy comes up, said he just got a 32 inch TV, didn't need it, wanted to sell it. Now, I don't have a TV. I like to have a TV. And unfortunately, at my sister, after dropping me off after Thanksgiving, she and her son went to Walmart and they were selling 50 inch smart TVs for 150 bucks that, you know, I could have got one then. But, you know, it is what it is. And TV is not a priority. I eventually will, you know, but what I told this guy I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to buy a used TV from some rando in the street. When I buy a TV, if I ever buy a TV, it's going to be, you know, from a store, but it's, you know, I, I use my, the only thing I'd want a TV for is just so that I could watch things on a TV screen and not on my laptop. Um, I mean, I, I don't watch, you know, regular programming. I mean, I will watch my TV shows online. I, you know, I have Netflix, I have Hulu, I have Amazon Prime, there's Pluto TV, there's two movies. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of websites that I use that I watch, I watch stuff online. I don't need a TV. So it's not high on my list of priorities. And it's obviously not where I'm going to be spending my money time soon. But then after the TV guy left, here comes another guy who just bought a phone and they were having a special. When you buy a phone, you get a free pair of earbuds. Try to send with earbuds. I'm like, dude, when I bought my Samsung back in March, I got a free pair of the Samsung earbuds and I don't use them. I use the cheapy no name Bluetooth earbuds that I absolutely love. And I wish I could th remember the name of them so I could order another pair. So he went off to find someone else. And then right after him, some guy came up wanting to sell me a joint. I'm like, dude, okay. It's Oklahoma. We have medical marijuana now. I don't have a marijuana card. I have no interest in getting one. The last time I tried anything like that, um, herbal supplements, whatever you want to call them, years ago and had no effect on me. I have frequently had the opposite effect of medicine. I remember as a kid having to go see a new dentist, and I'm always one of those, I don't like surprises. You tell me what's going to happen at a dentist, I'd be like, okay with it. But if you change plans in the middle of that dentist appointment, i freak out. I had a dentist one time that my mom said I was going for a cleaning and exam. So we go there, and in the middle of it, the dentist's like, oh, this tooth needs pulled. Let's go ahead and pull the tooth. Nope, I'm up, out the chair, out the door. Not having it. So the first time the dentist dealt with me, he's thinking, okay, this is going to be a problem, child. Tells my parents, okay, we have to do an after hours, because he figured I was going to scream. He didn't want to scare the other kids. Fair play. My parents tried to tell him, you know, if as long as there's no surprises, he'll be cool. Dentist didn't believe him. So we're going to do an after hours, so my parents have to pay extra. And gave my mom this medicine that was supposed to sedate me. So she gives me the medicine and it makes me just a tad bit hyper. Go to the dentist. The dentist is like, why didn't you give him the medicine? Mom's like, I did. That's why he's so hyper. Dentist tried to reschedule. Mom's like, no, just try it. Just see what he does. I mean, I knew I was going to get a tooth pulled. I was cool with it at that point. Go back there, sit down, sit in the chair. No problems. Numb me, take the tooth out. We're fine. I just didn't like surprises. So anyway, so I just, I don't always know what effect I'm going to have for medicine. You know, I mean, I do have ADHD and, you know, so obviously stimulants tend to slow me down a bit. So, you know, apparently other substances just don't affect me. 
So anyway, that was my Sunday. Monday was my birthday. Went with my sister to have lunch. There's a Chinese restaurant near where I live. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, going to make everyone seasick. Um, kick to the table. The um, this Chinese restaurant not far from where I live. That when my when our mom and our my, our stepdad would come into town, this was the Chinese buffet we usually went to because it's always I've always tend to live in this area of the city, so that was just the closest we always went to. The fun part is, you know, there is a Vietnamese pho house that's attached to it. Now, I'm not that big into pho. I don't, I'm not going, if I'm going to Chinese buffet, I'm not having soup. I am gorging myself on crab rangoon and, you know, kung pao chicken and, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, you know, most pho houses have puns for names. There's, you know, fa- fabulous and, you know, all kinds of, you know, different ones. I'm trying to think of the ones I've seen in this area. This one. It's a good thing I'm not don't have enough followers to be monetized. The name of this noodle house is Fa Kim Long. And I mean you can go into Google Maps at 23rd and Classen Boulevard in Oklahoma City and look for it. It's on Google Maps. It's actually it's Fa Kim Long. So anyway, so we we ate there, had fun, you know, messed with it and whatnot. Sister goes to Michael's and take, we go to Michael's. And, of course, my sister gets yarn and different arts and crafts kids for her friend's kids, her kind of, you know, adopted grandchildren or whatnot. You know, she's she's claimed them. So, anyway, and then I have been trying forever to get a – find a new case for my needles. I have – when I, my first set of knitting needles came in this. You know, you, you unroll it. It's got the little things. It's like, you know, you tie it shut. It's not bad. It works. It's not – it's – I'm starting to poke out the end here. But – you know, it still works. It's just, it's pink. I don't like pink. Did as a kid. I was absolutely obsessed with the color pink as a kid. But only, it's, you know, I fit all my needles in there. It's getting, starting to get full and um, having to tighten and tighten. It's not quick to get in and out. So what we found, it's a wine bottle holder. You know, but it did that. We found the, the it's the least Christmassy one we could find. And almost all of my needles fit in there. All my regular size ones fit. Any of the long ones, they don't fit in there. So, you okay back there? Little Miss sometimes isn't so graceful. She fell off the cat tree. Um, my, long, my long ones don't fit, so they're still in the roll-up case. I don't use them as often, though, but of course I am using a pair right now. But, you know... I'm still looking for a case. I'll find one eventually. I just don't want to spend a whole lot of money on one. And... Hang on just a second. Someone's knocking on my door. Well, that was interesting. That I thought was one of my neighbors knocking on the door asking to plug in a power bank or something. There's neighbor drama going on. No, it was the city police department. Um, freaked me the completely out. Um, Last time that I had cops knocking on my door and asking my name, someone had sent them to do a welfare check when I was not doing so well. Anyway, actually, no, the last time was when I accidentally set off my alarm at the last apartment I lived in and couldn't figure it, get my phone to answer when the security company called. And two hours later, police knocked on my door to check on me. Made me feel real safe then. Anyway, so... Apparently, they are actively looking for a neighbor that was the one. There's four. I live in a building that's a house that was turned into four instead of a duplex, it's a quadplex. So, one of them, he, one of my neighbors had this person had been living with them and he just kicked them out the other day. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know much about it. Don't want to know. But I know that they are actively looking for, um, they said, if I find her. To call, I asked for a card, you know, kind of, you know, whatnot. And they're like, no, just call 911 if you see her. And I'm like, um, is she violent? And they're like, no, don't worry about it. Just, they just that once they find her, we won't be seeing her again. And um, they are staying in the area until they find her. So I'm like, yay. Oh, well, you know, I used to live in public housing. It, it was way worse out there than this. Anyway, so wherever I was on there, 
my needle case, I like it. I need one for the long ones. Um, I'll find one eventually. Or I will get my sewing machine out of the closet back there and make one. I'm learning sewing. To, I've, I've been wanting a sewing machine. Excuse me. Finally got one. Found some patterns. Found some stuff that I wanted. Actually went so far as to cut the pattern out. Have everything set up. Ready to do it. And then it was time to sew it, and I'm like, I can't do this. And I saw it's been sitting in my closet ever since for like a little over a year now. I'm going to eventually, that's that's on my to-do list kind of creeping towards the top is to actually get this sewing machine out and figure it out. Because I used to, I had someone that taught me how to sew when I was in high school, and it wasn't as hard as I expected. I could do it. So I know I can do it now. I just need to do it. So anyway, that was Monday. Tuesday, you know, that was dentist. I already talked to you about that. I did check with my sister's dentist in Cozumel. Cozumel um, her, her crown's there. Here, the crowns would be like $850. Down there, they're $400. Um, so what's probably going to happen is I'm going to get my crowns down there, or at least two of them. Um, I did put in a request for the OU School of Dentistry to become a patient. It's just a waiting game with them um, to see if they can even help me. Wednesday, I went to dinner with Chuck and David. Gave Chuck his cro the crocheted hat that and scarf that I'd made. This it was too small. I figured it was going to be, but he likes the pattern, so he wants. So I'm going to make another set. Told him just to you know donate that. I think David David works for the post office, and I think they have a hat at like the angel tree type thing up there that they can he can donate the hat and the scarf that's too small for him. I did give him the cro the knit hat that I had made. He likes it. Um, the pattern, but he liked the pattern for the crochet set. So I'm going to, and that set was, is easy enough to modify. Um, it was the first time I'd done the pattern. So I just followed exactly now to modify all, cause it's each row is the same stitch, the whole row. So it's easy instead of just stopping at, you know, 105, the chain of 105, you, you can keep going to wherever you need it. It's just easy. You just make it longer. Okay. They're walking by, they might be knocking on my door again here in a minute. But we'll keep going until they knock. Um, I did tell them where they've been lurking. So, because there's one house out here that kind of has a problem with squatters, and um, they might be over there. So I told the officers about that. That I can see people walking back and forth outside my window. So, anyway, but Chuck likes the hat, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the, another crochet set for him. But he did basically commission a project. He wants kind of like a Santa esque hat, but he wants it long, like you know, almost like down to his waist, but not. So I found a pattern and it's by Ryan Anderson. I found it on Lovecrafts. It's for a stocking hat. It says for gnomes or pirates. It's cute. I'll post the link, you know, in the description down below. Um, the pattern itself calls for DK yarn. Chuck picked out a chunky size seven yarn and size five yarn. So I had to experiment with the pattern, and it's funny because I'm actually using the stitch count for the toddler size hat, but that's the size that I had to use to come up with the right one. So this is what we have so far. So, you know, we have the white, super fuzzy, super soft, the white. I like it. I'm not the easiest to knit with, but it's not impossible. That, and then we have the red, and so he does, he wants the stripes, you know, not uniform so some like this is a two a little over two inches and then you know the next will be three inches and there might be one inch you want it just very but then you know the white again in between it so i'm about to go to the green you can see that in there it's kind of it looks looks like i'm knitting santa claus right now so i'm working on that i'm hoping to have it done it is it's a you knit flat and then seam it when you're done so i'm hoping to have that done by wednesday that's pretty much the only project i'm working on right now so We've got that one going. Then on Thursday, of course, you know, Thursday's a therapy day. Went to the therapy, saw my doctor as well, more medication adjustments. My brain soup doesn't respond to, like, the, the medicines that people are currently using, like the, like, you know, the Wellbutrin, the Pristique, the Trintilix, you know, the stuff that's kind of popular now, my, I'm just, my brain's just not responding to it. So, and I have to say with, I will, you know, when we find a medicine, usually it works for a couple of years and then it just isn't effective anymore. And it's like, I have to take a break from it and then take a break from it. And then like three years down the road, it'll probably work again. But just since I, since I've been on antidepressants 
consistently since 2015 is like we've just gone through the mall. They're just not working. So we've gone old school to medicine that I haven't taken since 1995. It was, I think it was kind of new then, but Luvox. And I mean, it's just, I'd have to look at the generic name of it, but I mean, it's just like a older generation of something that's currently on the market, but whatever it is, whatever the difference in between the generations, it's working. I mean, I've only been on it for a month, so I'm just barely starting to feel the effects. I mean, it generally, you know, you start feeling it at four weeks and generally at about six weeks, you really start feeling it. And at about eight weeks, that's what you're going to feel like on it. So just in four weeks, I can feel enough of a difference that I'm optimistic about it. Um, I'm just, I'm looking forward to the day that I'm just not numb 95% of the time. So Friday I went for, what could you do on your little crackhead? Cats are on something, I swear. So anyway, Friday I went for an eval for, at this place that does um, dentures, partials, implants, things like that. And if I wanted to get an implant for the tooth, $1,995, which is funny. I graduated in 1995. Anyway, that's cheaper than the actual quote for bridge from the first dentist. But uh, a partial would only be $390, including the extraction. I'm not thrilled with the idea of a partial. It's just cosmetic only. Like, I have to take it out to eat. I mean, there's part of the reason why, you know, they said with just one tooth on there, that makes it it's kind of weak because, you know, however it is. They explained it. I just can't word right now. Um. So basically, I mean, it's cosmetic. But at this point, I can't afford to spend, with all the dental work I have to get in, I can't afford to spend all of my savings just to fix one tooth and then hope that, the re that none of the rest become urgent. Um, considering that one of the crowns that I have to have over here is for a tooth that I broke when I was in Mexico last year, last winter. And they did a filling when I came back. And I can already feel like a ledge on that tooth. Like it's part of that, either the tooth has broken more since then or the crown or the filling just uh, has started to break or something. But anyway, that tooth needs a crown before, you know, it breaks to the point that it has to be extracted. And if that tooth gets pulled, you know, that I'm going to get to the fact where I, you know, can't, you know, eat on one side of my mouth if I have enough teeth missing, which I only have one tooth missing over there, but you know, that's one tooth too many missing for what I'm concerned. So I've decided that what I'm going to do, and I'm not thrilled about it, I'm going to get the tooth pulled and get a partial at the denture place. And my sister's taking me to Cozumel probably, I think, next beginning of next month. She wants to go back down there. She likes being, being in, in Cozumel. She spends a lot of her time down there. She wants to be down there, but she wants to. She's really nervous kind of going back because she's been dealing with some stuff. So the first time she goes back, she wants someone with her. So... I'm going to go with her. She'll take me down there and I'll see the dentist to get two of the crowns done. Um, depending on the cost, she wanted me to, the dentist down there was talking to me about doing Botox for grinding because, you know, um, we'll see on that. And then I'm going to get the fillings done at the first dentist because all the prices for fillings seem to be pretty much the same all the way across the group. And then yesterday last for my update last yesterday the five bar script that i hadn't been able to go to in forever we had it and we actually had it at my house because originally we were going to have it at a library in norman and then my sister wasn't sure if she was going to be able to go so i told the other person in the group because this is this is a small group that's usually only like three or four people so she said well we know we can always have it you know i can come to the city we can have it at library out there and i'm like well you can always just have it at my house i mean we don't have to go to the library and so we came to my house and I mean, it was from like noon to like five o'clock. I mean, we we're just sitting here and I was working with my sister crocheting and basically just got her where she's just single crocheting over and over again until she gets the hang of it. And then, you know, we'll work, get, get her on to double crochet and then have to have, you know, cause I think she can do it. She just waited so long between the last class to between when she took the class with the lady and when she actually did herself that <sighs> it was my phone. Um, that she just lost confidence. And so getting her just single crochet, repetitive, do it over and over again. And she got, you know, she was doing really well with it. And she, she, she can do this stuff. It's just a lot of it's a matter of convincing her that she could do it. But, you know, it's all good. So anyway, my week coming up, t tomorrow is my creative arts group. Yay. My sister gets to go. She got the approval to go. Um, 
it was funny because her therapist recommended her to the group. And since I was already in the group, the group leader had to call me to ask me if I was okay with it, you know, since we're siblings. So I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, there's going to be challenges, but there's going to be more benefits for her, you know, for both of us than, you know, for her not going. So Tuesday, what are you doing? I swear. Do cats get terrible twos? She... Recipe, she was born sometime in April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Eight months old. Is that the equivalent of terrible twos for cats? Because, good grief, she's a crackhead. So anyway, Tuesday, so a couple months ago, it rained really bad. And after that, it's like the house settled or something. So there's like divots and ups and downs and heels and whatnot on my floor. And two of the four neighbors got their floors fixed and somehow the work order on mine got lost. So they redid a work order with the coming out sometime between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Lovely window there on Tuesday to get the floor fixed. Yay. Wednesday is D-Day, Dennis Day. That's when they're going to, I go in the morning, they're going to do the cast or mold or whatever they call it. And then on, um, and then that afternoon I come back and they pull the tooth and fit the partial in. Yay. And it's also my goal is to have Chuck's hat finished that day so I can give it to him. Thursday's therapy day, of course. And Friday, or my take, my, I'm taking my sister to court. <laughs> I'm not taking her to court. I'm just taking her to her court. She's, she's changing her name. So I'm driving her down there. And then Saturday, because I have peopled more in the last two weeks, and then I still have another week to go, I peopled more than I normally do in a month. And I'm just going no contact for 24 hours, putting my phone on do not disturb. I'm not responding to text messages, call phone calls, knocks on the door, anything. Um, I just, I need a break. And why is my cat attacking my tape measure? She's, I, she's bonkers. So now on to the fun stuff. So I've started Chuck's hat. You've seen that. The the white tends to shed when I'm working on it. I don't know if you can. Well, yeah, you can't see it in this camera. It's They shed it about as much as my cat does. Now, once it's done and Chuck's wearing it, it's not going to be shedding like that. It's just shedding, you know, when you're knitting it. So there's that project. Oh, I'm losing knitting needles. Can you hear them hit the floor? I started another scarf for... I've lost it for David. This was crochet one. This one actually came from Crystal Bag of Day, and um, one of her tutorials. She did a video tutorial on it, and I got started on it. And I can't remember which one it's called. I'll put a link to her to that tutorial. But um, I started following the video. I kept getting confused at the, the turns because it's just two alternating rows. You know, once you make it past like the first couple rows, it's just two alternating. And I kept getting confused in the beginning and the ends of each row. But she sells the pad a written pattern on Etsy, and it's only it was only two dollars. So I bought the pattern from Etsy, which is a really good price. Some of the prices you know I've seen for other people's patterns have been way more than that. So two dollars is a great price. So got that project going. I've been working on my latch hook rug. This it's going to be two cats sitting on a fence. This you know I've made it to the cattails. Working on that one, but I only work on that here and there. That's just more when when I've got like thirty minutes between, you know, until bedtime, and I want to do something instead of just sit there. So I'll work on that for a couple for a couple minutes. I finally did the binding on the other latchik rug. I did. I love, this yarn is so soft. The yarn on the other one's not as soft, but this is really soft. But I like it. So I finally did the binding. So I'm going to figure out a way to hang it up on the wall somewhere. Um, and get that one done. And I cleaned and organized. I have this oversized Cosmo bag that I use as my project bag. So I kind of cleaned it out to get things organized because I think I'd lost it. Uh, I was looking for my tape measure. And so I finally had to clean it out. And then I realized I might have a problem. We have, okay, so you, you've seen Chuck's new hat, David's scarf, the Latchik rug, this bag, which is a Cosmo bag, 
I tell my sister goes to Cosmo a lot. This product has David's knit scarf that I'm working on. Then we have this one, which is my crochet blanket, which is just double crochet, but you crochet in the spaces between the stitches, not actually in the stitch, which, so it's kind of a little bit more condensed. But I like it. This is the purple blanket I've been working on. It's so got that project going. We have the yarn that I'm going to work on redoing the hat, crochet hat and, and scarf for Chuck. So there's that project. And we have this one is, I think it's a mouse. It might be a, no, I think it's a bunny. I'd have to look back at the pattern, but a amigurumi or stuffed animal project that I'm working on in this one. We have the latch hook, not latch hook, but the loom knit blanket that I've got going that I haven't worked on in quite a while. And my knit blanket with the Bernat home deck yarn that I love. These are all technically my active whips. Now, some of them I haven't worked on in a couple months. I don't know if that still keeps them in the active thing. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight active whips. Not counting the, the junk hats that I make. That those are on hold because I... Get out of the window blind, you little crackhead. Hang on. Stop. I'm going to lose my deposit. I swear. Um, the junk hats and the junk blankets that I'm, those are kind of set aside for right now because I don't need eight whips is enough. I don't think I need 10. So now I do have some, some, anyone want to borrow a cat? Um, I do have some non yarn fun stuff. I bought these pictures from eBay and I, when you buy pictures from me, but a lot of times, you know, okay, they're coming from China. They're in, sorry, I'm hearing word noises outside. They, you know, they're not the normal, you know, eight by 10 or 16 by 20, whatever size frames, you know, photos that we have here. So finding frames is hard that fit. So like these are 11 by 14. Like it's Groot, it's baby Groot. So it looks really cool. I broke the glass in the frame, putting the picture in, but look at the back. This is the fold over. Now this is, I mean, I'm not missing out on anything folding it over like that. But yeah, this is how how hard it is to find you know, frames that fit. But I've got that one. And then we have this one, which I don't know. I mean, it's just a little fire. I mean, to me, it's, it's a firebomb. Um, I don't know if it's a volcano erupting or whatnot, but I just kind of like, hey, look, you can see my, my computer screen. Good thing nothing horrible on any of my tabs. So see, even on this one, you know, there's there's overlap. But, you know, it works. So I can actually have art and have stuff on my very blank walls. And then so the um, the last chicken rug will get hung up. So, and then also the last two things. Um, sorry, I don't normally talk this much. So I get dry throat. So you, you've, you've met Niles in the background, you know, sitting there with the Superman shirt on. So I have two new pets. I've got a cat and a dog. This is the cat, and his name is Road, like R O A D, like you drive on. And this is the dog, and his name is Kill. And Little Miss likes them. Little Miss likes to. Little Miss will sniff their butts, but she also chews on the ribs and the tail. I told you, Little Miss has got some issues. So, anyway, that's where I am. This is, video is super long, and it's going to be fun editing it. Um, because how long it is. Anyway, that's this week, and it's going to be a busy week, so you may not hear from me again until next Sunday. Um, you also may hear a medicated me mumbling something Wednesday after the dentist. And like I said, you know, I'll post a link to the um, the hat pattern that I'm doing for Chuck, and then I'll also post a link to um, Crystal's Bago Days um, video tutorial of the scarf that I'm making for Chuck. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you all next week.